So that's the theoretical um, framework with which we try and generate private equity returns. Let me very quickly go through a real live case study here in Vancouver on a company called For Refuel. Uh, this is a picture of, of what For Refuel does. Actually, that's a fueling truck that goes out to yards and fills um, equipment and, and fleets of vehicles overnight or during the day such that those vehicles don't have to actually go to a card lock gas station. I have no idea what that apparatus is that the guy is, is filling up, but nonetheless it has a hose running out of the truck, so I assume he's filling up that, that big yellow piece of equipment. The company was founded in 1995 by Jack, a gentleman by the name of Jack Lee here in Vancouver. Uh, Jack is not here in the audience tonight because he's busy uh, enjoying life in Australia on an extended vacation at the moment. But Jack founded the business in 1995, grew it tremendously from 1995 to 2009, and in 2009 really stepped back from the business a little bit and thought to himself, listen, I've created this great sales structure in the business. I've grown the business tremendously. I'm getting to the point now where every time I add new business, I don't seem to be getting a commensurate lift in my profitability. So perhaps I need to change, how, change the way I'm doing things. And, and, and to Jack's credit, he thought about taking on a partner to help him make a transition to do that change. He went and hired an agent, uh, Deloitte, here in Vancouver. Deloitte created a little bit of tension, shopped the deal, introduced us to Jack, which takes us to the sourcing and screening uh, um, part of what I discussed before. We were introduced to Jack, we had our first date, we fell in love, uh, we talked about uh, various objectives, we married his objectives with our objectives, and we issued an LOI, which takes us into the diligence phase, and the love affair wasn't so terrific uh, for about 90 days. When we had to go in and negotiate the terms of the deal. We had to do diligence. We brought in outside people, industry experts. We did our 100-day plan. Uh, that part was fine. That was very exciting for Jack. But the other stuff, not so exciting uh, for Jack. But in the 100-day plan, Jack really said to us, you know what this business really needs is a superstar CEO. And I, you know, it's, it's gone kind of beyond me to do this, but we really need a superstar CEO. So that formed the basis of our 100-day plan. And that CEO was to be operationally focused. Again, Jack, terrific sales culture, but needed to overlay an operational um, um, strategy to the business. So we closed the transaction. We hired a CEO that came out of Superior Propane. He was actually running a $100 million EBITDA division of Superior Propane. You know, I asked him, I said, why do you want to take this job? It's a much smaller company. You're going you're to work for half the pay. And he said to me, Eric, it's very simple. I can get a big paycheck at Superior Propane. I can watch my stock go up 1%, 2% every year. That's not a knock on Superior Propane. I don't know what the number really is. But it's something like that versus I can go to work for, for refuel and you're going to give me a bunch of options. And when, the, and when we sell the company in five years and I do a fantastic job for you, those options are going to be worth way more than I can ever make sitting here at Superior Propane. I thought that was a fantastic answer. Uh, he got the job and uh, he set out to hit the ground running. He delivered value right out of the gate and uh, we hit all our milestones in three years of ownership. And we sat there in combination with Jack and we said, let's head for the door. So what happened during that time frame? Uh, with our partnership, new CEO, Jack's involvement, we doubled EBITDA, we tripled cash flow, we sold the business for a much higher multiple, all through positioning from when we bought it, and we generated a 4.2 times invested uh, 4.2 times return, our invested capital, or a 68% IRR. Again, that's gross. That's not net of fees uh, because we can't allocate the fees to each individual deal. One more quick example. Um, this is an example of some Riaz is here in the audience tonight. But I wanted to quickly go through this example. I'm not going to go through all the four phases here. 
just in the interest of time, but M&A is very important in driving our returns. So we owned a business called Associated Brands, which was a private label food business. It was just a ah, so-so investment for TorQuest, never really grew. We had kind of a tired product portfolio, and we really wanted to exit the business. We went and shopped it around. We didn't really shop it around. We had some discussions with some US strategic buyers who were aggregators of private label businesses who we knew wanted to get into Canada, but they said, listen, what you have is too small. So we went out and decided we needed to add a third leg to the business itself. At the time, Riaz was running a little bit of a process to sell either all of his business or part of his business, uh, a, a business that his family started, and Riaz was the control shareholder and CEO at the time. So we found Riaz. Um, we ended up doing a transaction where he amalgamated his business into associated brands. He took some money off the table, but more importantly, he rolled some of his equity into our deal. He joined our board. He became our partner in that. Huge value add on the board. And, uh, and, and, and we ended up selling that business months later. I think within a year of doing the acquisition, if I, I can't remember exactly how long. But what we did is we, 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 we achieved some synergies in the two businesses by reducing some some redundant costs, not a chainsaw, just a few redundant costs, and we sold the business to the strategic buyer uh, through a process. There were actually two strategic buyers, both of the ones we targeted initially, that bid up the business, and we got a strong uh, result for, for, for all the shareholders. So, two very different situations. I thought I'd use them, I thought I'd use local examples, but really what we have as a result, is ongoing friendships with both Jack and Riaz. Uh, Riaz has been terrific in referring deals to us, great source of deals in Vancouver area, great pipeline for us. In fact, both of those individuals took part of their proceeds and invested directly uh, in TorQuest Fund 3, uh, which is terrific for us. We love when that happens, and it reinforces our brand. This is an interesting slide. I'm not going to go through the whole slide, but I mentioned in Fund 1, and we only have this data for Fund 1 because it, Fund 1 is completely closed. We generated a 2.9 times invested, a multiple of invested capital. This bridges how we go from our one times investment or our investment to the 2.9 times. The two bars that I think are worth mentioning are the 0.8 times, which is earnings growth. So we really work hard to grow the businesses that we own. <clears throat> Excuse me. And the second one worth mentioning is, is the 0.6 times multiple expansion company. This, this is a bit complicated to explain, but what this really is, is positioning the company for a better exit than we bought it. It is saying that if we bought something for, let's say, six times EBITDA, how do we position the company during our ownership to sell it for eight or nine times. And so that's work that we do in partnership with management to achieve that. The rest of the stuff is interesting, but not as interesting as those two bars. So what's our, what's our target market? Why do we think we can invest over a billion dollars in Canada and hopefully more as we go to raise our next fund? This is an interesting statistic, 350,000 uh, business owners by the year 2020 will exist in Canada over the age of 55. We think that number is growing rapidly. That represents over a trillion dollars in value. Now, all of these companies won't be for us, but nonetheless, that's a pretty decent size pond to swim in or fish in or whatever you want to call it uh, to focus on Canadian deals. So that's why we're excited about the opportunity in front of us. That's why we hope we'll continue to raise funds and, uh, and our business will survive uh, for a long time. Thanks for your attention.